Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and here with a fan favorite, familiar face, and busy guy. Um, I would tell you to introduce yourself, but who doesn't know you? There's still some out there. My name is Matthew Black. I am the owner of Black's Buildings, also my shed, and now we're starting up a new program that we would love to chat with everybody about, uh, Shed University. Shed University. Very cool name. Yes, sir. Like the name. We had some help with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there's some, uh, what can I say? There's some sharp guys out Man, there. Man, I'll tell you what. You know? Um, so, yeah, let, let's talk about it, Matt. Let's get into Shed University, what it is, why it's necessary in the industry. Yes, sir. Give me your give me your overall arching thoughts. Yeah. Why? Yep. So, as we all know, uh, the shed industry is a growing industry. Um, things in the past have been very traditional when it comes to sales. So there's, you know, always been a sales process. But in the past, it looked more like set up a bunch of lots, put somebody at the lot with some buildings there, and if somebody comes in, they're going to sell them a building. So that. And that's done really well for a long time, but you know, as we all know, sales are changing. Um, you know, online marketplace is hot. Um, you can still do really well with that traditional model, but there's a need for a better sales process. And a lot of companies already have great sales processes in place, but there's also a lot that don't. So we wanna provide a resource for the people that maybe you're struggling or maybe they just want to learn more. Uh, we want to try to give them the tools and the knowledge to, to be a better sales professional um, and hopefully sell more sheds in return. You know, you said sales are changing. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, now more than ever is Definitely. the first thing that come to, to, to my mind. Uh, not only in the shed industry, and I know we talk about this a lot, but post COVID yes. um, you are starting to see some, um, just a more move towards folks trying to figure out what what is the path to sale the sale. What, yes. How do I get there? Exactly. How do I like we, we sales aren't so easy. Maybe you came into this during the COVID rush as a sales uh, um, <laughs> as maybe you came into this. Sorry, uh, you know during the sales rush as a as a shed seller. And you're like, man, it had all this hope, but now, you know, government money's maybe not so available. Oh yeah, it's not just hitting our industry. I've heard in the power sports and other industries, friends talk about it, Definitely. how it's just kind of taking a bit of a nosedive. Yeah. So now it's like back to the basics 101, For trying sure. to figure out how to get a sale. Yeah. Um, when you say sales are changing, what are some of the things you you see? You're a manufacturer. Definitely. Yes, you know, sir. so what are some of the things you see at Blacks and adjustments yeah. that need to be made? For sure. So at Blacks, our business model is a little different than most. Uh, we don't have sales lots everywhere. Um, we do have our manufacturing location where we sell out of, but it's just a different sales process. So here, you know, we're heavy online as far as marketing, advertising. Um, but then it's what do we do once we've got the lead? How do we take that lead from a sale? And that's where we've really have had to hone in. Um, sales aren't near as easy as they were during COVID. I mean, people, if you build it, they will come, was definitely true uh, during COVID. Now, not so much. Now you've really got to go out there and prospect and you know get those leads and then handle those leads correctly and make sure that everything is the best that it can be. Because you've got other people that are in the same boat as you. There's all the other companies around you, your competi competition out there, they're all trying to come up with the new thing to, to generate more sales. So how are you gonna stand out from your competition? What does it take? What does that process look like? Uh, that's what we're working on here at Flax. Uh, got a really great sales team here, do tremendously well. Uh, my sales manager, I would put up against anybody in this industry, Nathan Reagan, is one of the best where's um, our where's our no yes, that's sir. not what we wanted not what? the one that ah, is, Nathan. That is, i mean let's bring it back for him one more time <laughs> yeah. no uh proud to have him a uh, great asset uh, as our uh sales manager here but um you know it's just the knowledge of the sales process is 
so crucial um, to make sure, once again, that you're not missing out on that sale and your uh, potential client's not going up the road where they've maybe got a better sales process and, you know, asking for the sale and all that. If your competitor's not scared to ask for the sale and you are, you're not getting the sale. Yeah. Your competitor's going to get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it? Uh, get your ask in gear. That's I it. I think is what they say. Don't get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I know. I have to yep. be careful. <laughs> that, <laughs> that may not show up in the not. podcast. But <laughs> yep. you know what? I've seen it in other places, and it really is oh, yeah. the truth. You've got to get to a point where you ask for for business and that can be an uncomfortable place for a lot of new salespeople. Um, I had a, you know, I see that you have think and grow rich here. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the things that that I did with, as a salesperson early on was read. And I remember getting, uh, the little red book of sales as a gift. Yep. And I read through it. One of the things that stuck with me the most was to celebrate your effort, not your successes. Just keep putting in the same week in and week out. And if it, if it, uh, yields, two sales one week and 20 the next yep. it, it, you you don't focus on the successes you focus on the effort you just keep putting in the same consistent effort yeah it's really what we've tried to do with the show for sure just keep putting in you know me and you were talking about two shows a week now and yeah. it's like yeah it's a big Ooh. demand yeah consistency is key that's it I, I even wanted to change to monday thursday and i'm like i won't do it because yep. i'm trying to stay consistent yep. you said the next big thing that's what everybody's looking for oh yeah honestly like yep. it, it it seems like it doesn't matter where it comes from magazine podcast book you know uh facebook wh- yep. whatever you want to call it. It, it it's everyone's looking for the next big thing what's the next idea and, and they want to jump on it as early as they can and get that first mover's advantage for sure but going back to the basics is very it's very necessary it is and you see camaraderie in the in the shed haulers. Yep. You see camaraderie in the shed manufacturing sector. Definitely. Um, you know, you've heard several people say, "If I'm broke down, this guy bailed me out." Oh yeah. If I'm out of material, this guy kind of helped bail me out. Yep. This helps build camaraderie among shed sellers. It does. And that's a tough thing because it's like we're competitors. Yeah. But ultimately, are we really competitors? I tend to think. We're not against each other in shed sales. We're we're if we're going to put a enemy up there, it's going to be traditional self storage. Yeah, that guy's those guys are doing like ten point. billion a year. Great point. We're yep. doing like two billion a year. Let's go get some of their markets. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And I, I mean, we've done uh, ad campaigns where we try to uh, post those against each other. So what what is the benefit of purchasing a shed versus off site site storage? Um, and the, the benefits are vast. So, you know, when we talk about, as you have many a time, just making the pie bigger, yeah. you know, let's not compete for this small little pie. What can we do to make the pie bigger? That's a great place to focus. Like, how do we convince homeowners, um, you know, that, hey, there is a better option. It can be in your yard. It can be aesthetically pleasing. Um, and you can have it for a comparable amount per month uh, if you want to go RTO or buy it outright. But even if you go RTO, it's a comparable amount per month. But after whatever, 24, 36, 60 months, you own it. And then there's no more. You can never say that about self storage. No, you, you always there's, pay. There's never any equity. There's never any ownership. Yep. You just always are renting. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's yep. what you want to do. But a lot of people might not realize the path to ownership is, is possible. And it's simple. It's in your backyard where it's, oh, yeah. you know, where it's easy to get to, it's convenient. Yep. And and so much more um yeah absolutely i I would say that that we have a lot of i mean i just saw you know i live in metropolis yep there was three shed uh lots there whenever i was selling sheds now there's zero uh we just saw containers come in yep right so that's getting to be it seems like a bigger thing but in paducah which a lot of people in the shed industry are familiar with you know ties to paducah in the shed industry there's probably eight or ten. I, I, I could almost set name them. There's a Amish Easy lot. Uh, there's a Dirksen lot. There's a Premier lot. There's a Graceland lot. There's a, I said Easy, Easy Portable, Easy PB. Now yep. there's a Cabin Connections. There's oh, a yeah. Martins. There's a, like I can go on and on. There's Secure Storage. There's yep. a, I just saw this morning, there is a, um, another on top of the 10 or 12 that are already there there's a self-storage lot going up oh wow (laughs) out of all these sheds that are available and all these 
already manufactured, you know, self storage units. Yep. There's another one going up with like three, four hundred units, something sure. like that. I mean, the profitability of those is just insane. I mean, I've even looked in at that business model. So, yeah. and and there's a whole sector of people who can never buy a shed. They they live in an apartment or sure. you know sure. something like that. So there's a a space for that. But there's a lot of people still, you know, that could purchase a shed that for whatever reason haven't. So like, how do we get this knowledge to those people, what does that take? Um, and that's a great place for any company that is looking to increase sales, try to create some ad campaigns that that post those two against each other. And uh, we saw great response from ours. Uh, it was put together what we feel like very well. Um, a lot of knowledge was presented there. So, I mean, it, it only makes sense. Let's, uh, let's no, try I'm to target these spaces where we can grow our industry by poaching a little bit from another. Yeah, working together. I mean, obviously we're gonna compete in the same market for those people who are looking, but I think that just goes to show that our market still has room to grow now. Definitely. You know, and I, I'd love to, to see some professional opinions with some data to come in and yep. back up and show these these different numbers. And maybe we can make that happen at some time. But yep. um, so putting together an event, kind of trying to bring people together, yep. get back to the basics, show them about shed sales one-on-one you know and then and beyond for sure um so how do you do this where, where do you do this how, how do yep. you make this happen i mean we're we're essentially trying to build off of maybe what processes you already have in place um and also you know anything that maybe you're lacking in um we want to show you the benefit of doing that so you know the event is called the road to the sale so it's what nice. steps does it take as you progress through that sales process? Um, what are the different parts of that sales process? And um, we've got some notes here. I mean, it typically starts with prospecting. So, I mean, how are you getting your leads? Um, what are you doing with those leads? Uh, filling your sales funnel? Um, you know, are you using Facebook Marketplace? Are you using Google Ads? Are you doing other things? Uh, Google My Business is obviously a huge one now. Um, anybody who's not putting money or concerted effort into raising your GMB listing, you're losing out. Uh, you've got to be in those top three if you want to show up. If you don't show up there, chances are they're not going to see you. They see those before they see your normal SEO results. The only thing above those are sponsored ads, which only a small percentage, I think it's 2 or 3% of people actually click on a sponsored ad. So you can pay that money all day long. Um, but the first thing after the sponsored ad is the GMB. Um, so like, what are you doing there? Uh, and then just like, how are you handling those leads once you get them? Um, how are you inputting them into your CRM system, um, customer relationship management, just like what information is valuable to have there? So, you know, we want to uh, set details for what the conversation was about, um, set follow-up calls, um, just you know, make sure you're tending to your leads the way they should be because they're all valuable. Even a, a lead that maybe seems like it's gone cold, it's still worth creating a follow-up campaign to try to um, at least an email campaign where you're still sending out emails because maybe they're cold now, but maybe they moved to a new house in a year. And then at that point, if you're not sending those emails, maybe they remember you, but chances are, they remember the shed lot that they drive by every day a little bit more. So, but if you're sending out those emails and they see those coming through continuously, they are gonna remember you, so. Hello, shed seller. Do you feel like some days you are on an island trying to navigate through the complexity of perfecting your shed sales process? For years, the shed seller has often had the do the best you can standard. At Shed U, we want to help you make doing the best you can more than guesswork with a proven shed sales process. Shed U was created for you, the shed seller, and aims to help you, the shed seller, learn the best techniques for selling sheds. How do we do that? Elements of Shed University include shed education you deserve as a shed seller, such as sales process management, lead follow-up, and sales script development. But wait, there's more. Attending Shed U is double the fun. Because after you attend Shed U on January 23rd and 24th of 2024 at the Knoxville Convention Center, you can attend the Garage Shed Carport Builder Show on January 24th and 25th. 
That's right. All registrants for Shed U receive complimentary admission to the GSCB show, which includes even more educational opportunities. If you have been wanting to improve your shed sales process for yourself or your sales team, be sure to attend Shed University, the obvious choice to grow your shed sales. At Shed University, class is now in session. There is a, when it comes to prospecting, um, I just encourage people to, to definitely take a harder look at it uh, yep. because we are entering into a space now to where, I mean, um, you know, it starts at your website. I've talked about this previously. It, start, it starts at your website, and, and as our buddy Dylan says, you know, that's yep. your digital storefront. Yep, Dylan Street. If y'all yeah. don't know him, check him out. Yeah, definitely check him out. Awesome guy. Uh, he, you know, he said before, it's your digital storefront. If and, and if you're trying to find it, the the dealer lot model. Yep. If you're trying to go out and find high traffic areas so that yep. you can get eyes on your sheds, makes perfect sense. You kind of want to do the same thing on your digital storefront. Without a doubt. You know, so yeah, you've you've got to be uh, taking a look at, like you said, not just Google my business, but yep. uh, you know, create, creating these you know these funnels and creating lead generation, and then sure. a follow up process and a, yep. a CRM process, and a, and then a, a whole sales process. And I think what happens in say like the consignment model we see a lot in the industry yep. right now, um, you might it, it might be like let's let's fire a dealer up, let's get him started, yes, and let's see what happens. Yep. You know, and it's really, I don't want to say it's unfair because I'm not criticizing anybody's like business oh, yeah. model. I'm just saying uh, there's a lot of people I know that said, and in sales in general, not just sheds, yep. you just got thrown to the wolves. Oh, yeah. But what about professional development that can create value, long term value that you can turn around and like put into others as well? Yep. And now you're not just taking a, a guess or an assumption. And, and if those companies aren't providing that, putting together a program that they can use for sure yep. yeah yeah i mean that's a big thing and you know companies like lp do great to go around to these massive dealer networks and give those dealers at least some education about yep. the product but the sad part is maybe the company didn't already give them that inf- maybe they're learning that information when lp comes when in reality it feels to me like the company at the company level should be putting out this kind of knowledge um Sure. But it's not always the case. Well, it happens a lot. A lot of times I'll see where a company will not maybe either provide a website or certain training or certain yep. tools that are necessary uh, for a shed seller to have success. And those those shed sellers will take it up on their self to go do this. And then all yep. of a sudden it's, it's almost maybe a little bit of a mess whenever the manufacturer begins to see the value so is is the dog wagging the tail or is the tail wagging the dog in this situation and the shed seller sees the value in these different tools but maybe maybe the manufacturer doesn't or maybe they do but it's not until which time these guys have already got in with a web developer and a 3d configurator and a erp and and all these other things and it's kind of like oh it's complicated now to peel the layers of the onion back yep should it be happening at the manufacturer level? Maybe that's a yeah. topic of conversation at some point. But. Yeah, I'd say it is. And I honestly do feel like there's more that can be done at the manufacturing level. And there are companies out there that are doing great at yeah. that level, but uh, also some of the, the biggest companies out there I've seen aren't. Um, but, you know, obviously they're doing something right. They've grown doing something, large, Doing something right, ain't it's they? A, it's a numbers <laughs> game. I mean, if you've got a million sheds sitting out there, obviously you're going to sell some sheds. So. No, I like it. The road to the sales. So yes, you've sir. got prospecting. What else? You know, yeah. we don't, we don't want to give away the, the cart here. For sure. But, uh, yeah. you know, what, what else you got on the, on the yeah. road? So, I mean, we're looking at, you know, building confidence uh, in your customer. So, you know, the customer interactions, the second – that they feel like maybe you're not confident in the process. If they see you, maybe you have an internal objection yourself about the price. Uh, maybe you feel like the price is too high. Whatever it is, if, if they can even smell the blood there, they are likely going to have that same objection. You've got to go into it with full confidence in your product and your pricing. Make sure that they understand you know, the quality they're getting is what they're paying for and just you know, be true about it. You've got to believe it because if you don't believe it, how are you going to make somebody else believe it? You can't fake it uh, when you're sitting face to face like you and I are right. right now. It's really hard to fake and especially fake it all keep, day, every day. 
Yeah. It seems like the key to that's hard conversations. Like yeah. you, you just gotta, you gotta figure out. I remember my, um, like, you know, where I just wasn't settled on the matter whenever it came to like rent own. Yep. Uh, you know, you talk about building rapport. One of the first things I used to think was a strength of mine as a shed seller, which is why I never brag about being a, a great shed seller. Like, yep. like your guy, like your guy, Nathan like Reagan, Reagan. Yes, sir. you know, um, the reason I never said I would brag about myself because when someone would come through the door and we'd talk about rent to own, I didn't understand the system well enough. So therefore I didn't believe in it. For sure. So when someone would say it seems expensive, I would always say, I know it is expensive, yeah. but nothing you said after that really mattered. If yeah. you weren't convinced or if you weren't convinced of the price. And yeah. I used to think that that was my relationship building expertise, building some value with yes. them because I'm an honest guy. You can trust me that I'm an honest guy. Yeah. But I learned after a while to answer that with a question. So whenever someone would say, well, do you think it's expensive? I would say, well, compared to what? Yep. You know, so then you just kind of put that question back on them for them to say, well, compared to, you know, like the fact that it's twice as much. And I would say, well, what are you going to be putting in your shed? uh, Well, we're putting a, you know, we just bought a brand new, you know, Dynaglide Harley Davidson motorcycle. And it's like, well, you don't want that in the rain. So it is expensive compared to leaving it out. Yeah. in the rain or sure. not which one do you want it to get rained on because did you consider when you bought this nice mower tractor or 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 motorcycle yeah. that it needs a shelter too definitely you know so it's it's is it you know is it is it expensive compared to leaving it out in the rain to rust yeah you know so then it kind of put it, it at least challenged them to think a little bit more about yeah, it shouldn't be so much focus on that as much as it's my personal decision on what I'm putting in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that that's honestly one of the, the objections that we get most often about rent-to-own purchases is yeah. just, well, it's so much more to buy. Yeah. And, I mean, the reality of it is it gives you the opportunity to buy it where otherwise you may not be able not to. Have, yeah. um, there's a reason people consider rent-to-own, and it's because they're unable to buy it outright. So what uh, what – what is the true cost of that building, even if you pay more and you couldn't have it otherwise? So um. My dad used a comment the other day. He's 80, just turned 80 this year. Okay. My dad used a comment that's not heard anymore whenever you talk about it. Uh, he spent a lot of time in debt. Yeah. But he used a phrase that I thought was interesting that you never hear anymore. He said, you know, telling me about a car he bought when he was younger. And he said, I bought it. And uh, I said, uh, Dad, you could afford that back then? He said, no, uh, I bought it on time. Oh, uh, yep. And you never hear that comment nope. anymore. I bought it on time. Yep. And I was like, on time, on payments. You're saying on payments. He's like, yeah, I mean, we had to buy it over time. So yep. uh, he understood while he didn't know the, the uh, I don't know, the deeper level math that was involved. For sure. He understood that time equaled money. It and does. he understood that whenever I borrowed money, over time, it was going to cost someone something, and it was going to yep. cost me something. That's exactly. I, right. I would love. I, I, I at some point, I want to write something on that because yeah. I just felt like it was such a, a cool moment when he was like, "Well, we bought that car on time." Yeah, it's a great statement. And no one says that. So anymore. true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you break it down, I mean, we give our time for money, but you know, going back to it, you know, we can never have enough money to buy time. So That's it's right. Like, um, yeah. I love it, dude. So building building confidence. Um, I mean, within that, it's like, you know, creating your sales script. Um, so okay. a lot of companies don't have great sales scripts. And when I say a script, I don't mean that you're looking at a piece of paper as you're trying to sell. I mean, you learn these things. And a lot of times uh, you learn it through role playing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we do a lot of role playing here, uh, especially if we get a new objection that comes through. Let's role play through and see how we could have approached this different to, to get the sale. And we'll just go back and forth about it. But, uh, but yeah, so there's, you know, the sales script is super important. It takes time to create that. But essentially it's just um, what are the different objections that you, you may hear? How are you going to overcome those and move the sales process forward from there? Um, after that, so we've got asking the right questions. Uh, this is where... You know, a lot of times these are some of the hard questions. Are you the decision maker? Are you the person today that I need to be talking to? If not, what do we need to do to get in front of that play or that person? Because there are a lot of times where, you know, we do a lot for, you know, the different local governments and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 
with those different entities, you know, it's, they're sending somebody in to kind of get a quote or whatever, but they don't make the decision. So, you know, we want to ask, are you the decision maker? And if not, you know, who do we need to speak to that's going to make this decision? Um, so that that's an important question. Also, their time frame. I'm sure we've all dealt with this, that people come in, oh, I'm not ready to buy right now, but I'm, you know, I'm just kind of looking around. And, you know, when you ask these questions, you're not just asking them for the knowledge. You're asking that so you can give the customer knowledge. So, well, you know, what's, why are you waiting? Um, what's the, you know, why aren't you ready to buy now? I know this is something that you're wanting to do. Um, and then you can find out if it's a, a money issue. And if it's a money issue, why is it a money issue? What, what can we do within your budget maybe to get you a building? Um, you know, there's just a lot of questions to be asked to make sure that the sales process goes uh, smoothly and uh, it, it just makes it more likely that you'll get the sale in the end. I love the decision maker question. There's yep. nothing wrong. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of the sale and being like, well, are we ready to wrap this up? And, oh, yeah. and you ask for the sale and they're like, well, I got to talk to my wife. I got to sure. talk to my husband. I got to yep. talk to whoever. And if you wait till the end of the process to hear that, you have no <laughs> chance at that point to come back. I mean, you can try, but if you ask that early on and yeah. you overcome that, then now, you know, cause the husband's going to want to say, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm the guy, you know, but if it's at the end and he's got some other objection on price or whatever that you haven't covered, you know, it's like, oh, let me go talk to my wife. But, yeah. Uh, like, let's, let's. Well, we're not looking to buy now. Time. We're yeah. just, we're just shopping around right now. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, like I, all those objections are just, they're, they're a daily For sure. thing. And, and really figuring out a, a, say, a guaranteed process, but a oh, well yeah. fought through process that handles yep. those objections. Yep. You know, that would be nice to have in the beginning of your shed sales it's journey. Great. Yeah, because <laughs> we keep all of our competitors' brochures on our desk. So if you want to go price shopping, let's price shop right here. <laughs> let's right price now. shop right let's, here. Let's look, and we're going to show you <laughs> why you're getting the best value. Maybe it's not always the best price. Yeah. But we're not going to sell you on price alone. We're going to sell you on price and quality, which equals value. Um, no one's ever said give me. Value. No one's ever said give me less quality. Nope. They've only said give me less price. Nope. Some people don't understand why it's more, and you've got to yeah. educate them on on the the quality. Um, and then once you do a good job of that, then they see the value. And even though it's more, you can close that set. The shed industry is comprised of a diverse group of companies, but also a diverse group of shed sellers. Proven sales processes are the backbone of successful businesses, and their effectiveness cannot be overstated. At Shed U, our processes provide a structured framework that guides the shed sales professional through the various stages of the sales cycle, ensuring consistency and efficiency. By following a proven process, shed salespeople can better understand their customers' needs, build trust, and tailor their approach accordingly. Additionally, these processes are developed based on years of experience and extensive market research incorporating best practices and strategies that have yielded positive results. Your Shed education from Shed University will not only minimize guesswork, but also maximize the chances of closing deals and achieving sales targets. Our proven Shed sales process will empower you or your Shed sales team to work smarter, not harder, and lead to increased productivity, customer satisfaction, and business growth. It's time to take the guesswork out of your shed sales process. Invest in yourself and your team when you attend class at Shed University. Don't be tardy. Book your ticket now at sheduniversity.com for this year's session on January 23rd and 24th at the Knoxville Convention Center just before the GSCB show at Shed University. Class is now in session. Next, next pit stop. Where are we going on this road to the sale? Next pit stop. Uh, so it's going to be a trial close. So, uh, you know, we always want to want to get out there and ahead of the, the end of the process, let's say, and try to ask for that sale. Try to uh, at least see what their objection might be once you've educated them and brought them this far through there um, just to kind of find if there's anything else that's holding them up from the sale. So that's typically our first time that we 
ask for the sale uh, during that trial close. Um, typically, we ask a minimum of four times for the sale during the sales process. So, uh, but this is the first stop, and this is a way to, to weed out any additional objections before we move uh, further through the process. Nice. Yep. And then we've got what? Uh, and just then it, it leads into, you know, once again, after you weed out those objections, continue to ask for the sale. Um, like I said, you can't be scared to ask for the sale. Yeah. Uh, there's so many times that we have people tell us no, and then they tell us no again. And we, we're always, you know, answering questions, trying to give them product knowledge. But then by the third or fourth time, they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Why am I not buying it today? And I mean, it, it may sound corny until you understand the process and see it happen. I would love to do, you know, some live videos of a sales process at the desk and really show everybody this is what it can look like. They've said no. They've said no again. They've said no a third time. We ask them a fourth time. They say yes. And it's, it's not that we're pressuring them. We are educating them and showing them why this is the right decision. Um, but obviously, you know, your, your sales process can be tailored toward your personality a little bit, but this is what we've found that works. This yeah. is, uh, there's a lot of individuals involved um, and this process is proven. This process is proven over and over and over again with a lot of companies that are seeing tremendous growth year over year. So we thoroughly believe in it and we feel like it could help just about any shed company out there. Man, I absolutely couldn't couldn't agree more. Um, I, I was given the opportunity to help grow the Shed Sales Professionals page. Oh yeah, just watching some it's of the content page. come together on that. It's been yep. very. It's been. It, I mean, it it's it's taught me things beyond selling sheds. Yep. You know, there's a lot of really good commentary that goes on there, and and other pages as well. I mean, you've got a Shed Haulers page and sure. Shed Manufacturers and all these different things. But I mean, those are great resources to come together and get that information. Yes. But um, you know, education is something that's valuable. The Apostle Paul talked about continuing education. Like I've always been a fan of education. Let, let me rephrase. There's a Bible verse that also says, "Let any man ask, uh, you know." Um, if he wants knowledge, let him ask and he'll receive it. I think it's James one five, and I'm paraphrasing. But yeah, uh, once you seek knowledge and understand it, uh, you you crave it. Yeah, you crave it because uh, you want you want to just learn more. And sure. and uh, I think that there's something to be said for like the what am I trying to say? The structure of education. Yes, it's one thing to learn things off a of Facebook post. Yeah, ponder it and put it into perspective. There's another to have a course. Yeah to have a, a well thought and um, systematic yes. learning of how to sell sheds. And that, that's what you're trying to provide, I think. And sure. I, I think it's really awesome. Where's this gonna happen at? Where, where are we gonna so, do this thing? So yeah, this event is January 23rd and 24th. It's at the Knoxville Convention Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, so it's a one and a half day event. So it's the full day, January 23rd. Uh, we're gonna have a really nice lunch that day. Um, we'll have some time for networking. Uh, we'll also have like a breakout space for uh, people who want to purchase a VIP ticket. Um, so they're able to get some higher level information there. Um, and so we've partnered with uh, Garage Shed Carport Builder for this event. So our events, the 23rd and 24th, uh, there starts the second half of the 24th through the 25th. Uh, we're just hoping this allows more people uh, to be able to attend both events. Um, you know, we've all talked about trying to get something for haulers and builders and, you know, rent to own and everything all under the same roof. So um, the more fragmented everything is, the more difficult it is for uh, attendees to make that in their schedule. So we feel like this is a great pairing um, to be able to add a lot of benefit uh, to the people that want to come see. Very cool. Yeah. For those who, uh, if you're not familiar with it, Shield Wall Media, yep. uh, they have a couple different magazine yep. uh, subscriptions that you can go to. Uh, yours truly uh, occasionally writes uh, oh, yeah. um, an article in or does some interviews, and it's been really cool to deal with those guys, uh, yes, you sir. know, Rocky and, and uh, Gary. And just, yep. uh, you know, Gary comes from a long line of uh, understanding construction business and things Definitely. like that. So it's cool what they're doing. Yep. Uh, Garage Shed Carport Builder Show, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, January 24th and 25th and the 
uh, 23rd and 24th for Shed University, booth 307. Um, you guys will be at booth 307. So yep. um, what else What else is going to be yep. at the event? So um, the event itself, so we're going to have several people who are known in the industry uh, speaking on the different topics. So uh, people who are uh, higher level individuals that a lot of people may know, some you may not, um, but they're people who have experience um, at a high level to be able to present on these topics. Um, also have a really good friend of mine, uh, Chris Pittman, presenting there. Um, he does sales training, uh, coaching uh, as well, so he's going to be speaking there. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a, a, a really great event. Um, we're, we're really looking forward to adding the value and just trying to create this space that we all feel like has been needed for quite a while. And uh, Very cool. Definitely would love to see everybody there at that event. Yeah, no, I, I think it's going to be great. How do they find out more about the yeah. event? So our website is sheduniversity.com. Uh, you can check out our Facebook page as well. Um, tickets will be for sale uh, on the website. You can buy them directly through the website. Um, you know, we are charging for tickets. I understand, you know, How people dare in this. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand people in this industry, you know, they. Well, they've, co- they've come accustomed to they kind have. of like, you yeah. know, some of the free events. But a professional sales training outside yes. of the industry is, yes, gosh, they're, they're, they're you know, they're good investments, but they're, oh, yeah. they're high dollar. Well, some of them are thousands and thousands of dollars. Sure. Uh, and what we've put together, I feel like, is on par with, with a really great program here. Uh, like I said, we're providing lunch. And tailor-made. Like yes. a lot of those guys are selling. I always make the argument like they're selling and there's yep. common denominators among all sales industry. But then there's shed selling. Exactly. And like you're really tailor making this to the shed industry. So I'm sure you're taking that price into consideration. Definitely. That, you know, you're not uh, doing an entree leadership program no, no. or <laughs> no. something like that. If anybody's ever looked into that, it's like $10,000 or right. something. You know? yeah. so, no, it's nothing on that level. We're talking a couple hundred bucks to 10 It takes events. resources. Yeah. Let's just, just call it what it is. Yeah. It takes resources to put things together and you're going out on the limb and making it happen. As so. much as we'd love to do this out of the kindness of our heart and foot the bill for everything, uh, it's just not realistic. So we want to make sure we're adding value. And I can personally promise that anybody that attends this event, pays attention, takes notes, you're going to see a return on that investment that is a thousand times what you pay for that overtime. So nice. it is a... It's a no-brainer, in my mind, um, spend a little bit of money to gain a ton of value. Well, I'm excited about it. I'll definitely be there, and I think it's awesome, man, that you're putting this together. For sure. Kudos uh, to you. Um, you're a busy guy. Yes, I understand sir. busy. There's so much going on. Man, I tell you. There's cool things happening, but the industry is growing, and, and, and I love uh, you know to be able to collaborate on some of these different events to be able to have that happen. Yes, sir. Um, that said – you know, gosh, not only Garage Shed Carport Builder, January 24th and 25th, but Shed University event, a uh, day and a half before that on January 23rd and 24th, yes, booth sir. number 307. Um, on top of that, gosh, we got, what, Shed, uh, the, the Shed uh, Expo. Shed Expo coming up. It's right yes, around sir. the corner. Right around the corner. So I, you're, you're going to be there? Or are you going to have a Shed Shed U booth there? Yes. As so well? Uh, okay. we'll have a Shed U booth that's right behind our My Shed booth. Uh, be sure to check both of those out. Uh, we'll have lots of information on the event. Um, so that booth number for the Shed Expo is? 152. 152. So once again, just right as you come in the entrance, you'll see My Shed. We're right up front. And then... Right behind us will be the Shed University booth here. So I uh, would love for y'all to, to stop by uh, both booths. While it's coming there. up before before we know it. Like, yeah, it's like it's just a quick away. trip down I-40 for you, isn't it? It is. Yeah, thankfully, uh, this works really well for me. Uh, both of these events are in the same location, and uh, they are about two hours, two and a half hours from me. So oh, it's perfect. very convenient. I've been to the, the last few shows, and... They've all been much further. So, man, I'm going as a as just as a guest. Yeah. This year, yeah. Um, to both shows, uh, I've been working so many booths here lately, and with Deanna joining, yeah. Uh, me here at Shed Geek, I've really just wanted to just just go and take it in. I kind of yeah. miss going to the events and taking it in because when you work the booths, uh, it becomes it. you know it's a job. 
without a doubt. And uh, just like the podcast, when you're when you're doing it as a job, it's different than yeah. a hobby or anything else that you enjoy for fun. It becomes it grows this this other layer, yeah. you know, of uh, just uh, commitment. And uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna watch some of the events, the seminars. We're gonna awesome. go shake hands and kiss babies and yeah. and all that kind of stuff, and just get a chance to just kind of um, uh, take 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 a load off and Without a doubt. enjoy it. Yeah, and know? that's something that. So I have been to an event uh, a few years ago where I did not have a booth, and it was a much different experience uh, yeah. when you go as a attendee uh, you can just take in so much more um, when you've got a booth there's a lot of responsibilities with set up and you're all on that. point uh, you're on point setting yeah. up taking down and, and just being there and trying to yeah. meet and greet and everybody like that comes through educational sessions uh, you know those are so hard to attend but especially uh, when you got a booth yeah. it was i tried last year it's just yeah. impossible for me to go to them so i, I wanted to experience that i sure. wanted deanna to experience that being that, that this great. is her first opportunity there uh get to introduce her and get to, a chance to meet a lot of n- new people yep. like i bet i didn't i didn't pre-warn you this question i might should have asked Uh-oh. uh last year you gave away a four-wheeler oh Are yeah you doing you doing like giveaways we and will stuff have this a year? giveaway this year as nice. well for this is for the the my shed booth there so okay uh you don't want to miss it uh you could leave with good bit of cash in your pocket i'd say so. uh, okay. is there any way we can guarantee that i win this yeah uh, you put the cash in my pocket and i'll hand it back to you <laughs> <laughs> very good that's uh, the only way no but uh really uh yeah we're, we're gonna have some great giveaways this year as well uh we i better not win the- this now since <laughs> i just said i'm going as an attendee You're not even eligible, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just i'll exclude myself from yeah, it just to yeah. make anybody feel better go. um uh, how's my shed doing man it's been a while since yeah. uh since i've been down here to see you in nashville yep. Seems like, you know, Blacks is growing all the time. Sure. Blacks Buildings, let me Blacks be clear. Buildings. Blacks Buildings is growing all yes, the sir. time. And uh, My Shed is doing doing well, man. I yeah. see you all over the place. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, with My Shed, we finally got to a really great place. Uh, it took us a while to get everything completely lined out the way we envisioned it. Um, but now we're onboarding new clients. Uh, we have a lot of clients under our belt at this point, so we're we're really ready to take things to the next level. Um, our price point on that is ridiculously low. So we've uh, put in a new pricing structure. So it's a 3D configurator as well as a back end system. The only thing that's not included is our ERP. And you're looking, you know, starting at about $450 a month for that. So, um, you know, your value there for what you're getting is uh, extremely great. So we're really trying to. Uh, to add value to businesses without having to charge them an arm and a leg uh, for that. Uh, so yeah, if anybody's interested in a 3D configurator or a back-end system or even our ERP, if you want to track your materials, track your costs, uh, we'd love to chat with you. Uh, give us a call anytime. Very cool, man. Like, yeah, there's, it's very ambitious taking on like a software, without a doubt. you know, and you're, you're introdu- introducing a software and, and I know there's, I hate to use the word competitors. Yeah. Uh, there's other alternatives out there as For well, sure. too, that have ventured into the same space. But you guys are very ambitious and doing that in a conservative yes. industry, too. I think it just uh, deserves a hand clap just for the, uh, the, the purpose of, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> you got me on that one. I wasn't expecting go. that one. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, th- I think it it's very ambitious. Thank you. It's very difficult to... Yep introduce that and to take the time and and do it the right way and yeah so like for all of you guys in that space um good good for you guys and sure. uh, yeah i, I just mean, it, it's not near as easy as a lot of people would think uh, a lot of yeah. people think oh it's just you know a couple keys press it whatever <laughs> but the depth of a system like ours it, it's just it's unfathomable the the amount of lines of code that go into this uh, yeah. you know a 3d configurator it's one thing not that they're easy but the whole back end to support a business, there is so much there, um, and it, it really has to work right every time. So yeah. um, for a long time, we were just dealing with beta users that we appreciate every one of them um, helping us work through the bugs, and now we finally got it all lined out. Really excited about Well, it. I'm excited for you, excited for all the others too. I'm excited really just that the technology is hitting the industry and that it's seeing some levels for a sure. success and growth and yep. consistency because it's it's uh it's not going away yep you know what i mean it's 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 here to stay and it's all the same thing we're talking about with the 
That's sales right. process. I mean, if yeah. you don't have the software and especially a 3D configurator in this day and age, I mean, these are things that you've got to have. I mean, in that yeah. sales process, going to greatly uh, increase your chance of making a sale there. Well, man, I appreciate it so much. It's really been good to just talk to you today. Yes, sir. Sit down I with really you and just it. chat. Um, again, Garage Shed Carport Builders Show um, yep. on the tw- it'll be January twenty fourth and twenty fifth of of uh, twenty twenty four. Shed University will be a day and a half event. Uh, prior to that, in conjunction with it on uh, January twenty third and twenty fourth, you can go to Shed. Shed-university.com. Uh, while you're there, make sure you sign up for our free ebook. We've got an amazing ebook on there, so lots of information. Uh, when you uh, go to the website, it'll pop up there. Um, just put in your email address. We'll send it to you for free. But I think everybody uh, should go to the website and get that free ebook. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, people handing out free information is, is valuable. Yes. It takes resources and to make it happen. Very so. well put together. Well, I, I see that all the time. Like, I don't see many, but occasionally I'll see an unsubscriber, yep. uh, you know, come across on Shed Geek, and I'll go, gosh, it just seems like I would be all in on the industry I'm in. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I want to yep. learn everything about it. Not only unsubscribe, I want to actually subscribe to more things. And that's it. So definitely want to check out the ebook and see what that's about. Yeah. Um, so, you know, VIP dinner, breakout rooms, Chris Pittman, you yep. got a lot going on. There's reasons for people to show up. Without a doubt. Yeah, once again, guarantee <laughs> that you're <laughs> going to learn something if you sit down and actually pay attention and take notes. Uh, you're going to bring that home, and you are going to uh, definitely make some money off that. Dude, I'm excited for you, excited to uh, see it come together. Booth number 307. Um, anything else on your heart here today? Just uh, any messages to the shed industry? I just, I really appreciate the whole shed industry. I'm proud to be a part of this industry, proud to know people like yourself and others. Um, it's, it's been a blessing to my life, my family's life since we found this industry and uh, just so thankful for, for all the, the people that I've met and the people who have poured into me in this industry and I definitely want to do my part to try to give back to others as well. Dude, I think it's exciting. I love watching it grow. I love new things and creative ideas coming to the the forefront. I can't wait to see what happens over the next five years in this industry because I think it just has. Yeah, I think if you're if you can get in that creative headspace and you're just out there trying to trying to, you know, make something happen. This is a this is a really nice industry to do that in because there's a lot of receptive people. Yep. Uh, There's a lot of businesses that are kind of like. I hear them talk about it all the time and it's tough and we have our share. Don't get me wrong. We have our, we have our share, but generally speaking, man, I think you can overcome that negative uh, negativity with a positive emotion and, um, you know, collaborations, one of those things. So you guys want to know more about it, give uh, Matt a call, uh, reach out to him, go to the websites. Um, Can't wait. If you want to call me, my cell phone number is 870-918-7085. Call me directly if you've got any questions. I guarantee it's dangerous will, putting your cell number. Yes, sir. No, that there. is my personal cell number. <laughs> if you want to talk about Shed University, my shed, uh, Black's Buildings, doesn't matter. If you want to stop by the shop and talk, we'd love to have you. We're right here in Lebanon, Tennessee. Uh, but definitely, you know, get in touch with me. I'd love to chat. Uh, if I can't get your call right then, I will get right back with you. Love it, dude. Love it. Uh, very cool. Appreciate you being on here with me today it's been a while but i'm sure there'll be another round i guarantee it and uh just can't wait to uh i can't wait to be at these events the the uh shed uh expo on september 27th the 28th of the shed u booth 152 and then the garage shed carport builders show uh both in knoxville tennessee both in knoxville and uh very convenient for me yeah i know it is well it's not too far for me too man so I, i guess we'll see you there yes sir and we hope to see you there as well thanks matt Yes, sir. Thank you.